You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 5. We just want to make sure everybody has is prepared and know what's, what's coming. Right now, a code red for residents who live near the Mayaka River, the potential flooding they could experience. And a warning from Sarasota Police this morning about a popular app that many use to buy and sell things. And it's a viral video from Hawaii. The lava tour boat explosion this morning we'll hear from a survivor. Good morning, Sunco starts right now. And August starts right now as well. Good morning. <gasps> That's right. Flip the calendar, first day of the new month. It is. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. It is 5 o'clock. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. All right, what is on tap for the first day of August, John Scott? First day of August. White rabbits, everybody. White rabbits. What? White what? rabbits, an old English expression. On the first day of the month, you say white rabbits, you get good luck the whole month. I think oh. it's, he made that up. He totally did. <laughs> no, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, no, white rabbits. So we're looking at a few showers and thunderstorms out in Gulf Waters, a pattern very similar to yesterday. We did not get a whole lot of rainfall near the coastline. We did get some fairly heavy rainfall inland, and I think that pattern will probably repeat itself today. We'll put the rain chances uh, decent in inland areas along the coastline, slightly lower today at about 40%. New Numerous thunderstorms out in Gulf Waters. Mariners, pay attention to that. A little bit of sunshine to start off your morning. We had some cloud cover that's since dissipated in inland areas all over the coast. We still have plenty of cloud cover out there because of those numerous storms. Rain chance that I mentioned at about 40%. We'll talk about increasing rain chances tomorrow in just a few minutes. Back to you. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic right now. 301 northbound. Some congestion on either side of State Road 70 northbound. Be aware of that. Little blip there also on 14th Street West southbound around 53rd. Let's check farther south now to Sarasota County. Nothing to report so far in the northern half of the county. And checking South County now, we'll find out it's all clear at 502. Well, it has now been 90 days since the first signs of an eruption on Mount Kilauea in Hawaii. Now, hundreds of homes there have been destroyed by the lava flow, and one crack or fissure has actually broken records. Malika Lincoln has a story. According to USGS, Pu'o'o's eruption continued nearly nonstop for over 35 years, while the Mauna Ulu eruption lasted almost five years. Compared to those events, geologists say an eruption lasting more than 89 days is not a particularly noteworthy record. But that does not in any way diminish the significant impacts the current eruption has had and continues to have on Puna residents, especially when there's no end in sight. A total of 24 fissures have broken out since the first vent opened in the Lenny Estates on May 3rd. Only one is active right now, Fissure 8. The channelized flow it's producing has moved at speeds upwards of 25 miles per hour as it continues to wind more than eight miles down the Lower East Rift Zone. It has officially claimed 720 homes, along with beloved spots like Malama Flats, Vai Apele at Pu'ukapoho, also known as Green Lake in Green Mountain, along with Vai Opai tide pools in Kapoho and the Halanui warm ponds, to name a few. More than 13 square miles have been covered by lava, which has also created more than 825 acres of new land in the form of a lava delta filling what was once Kapoho Bay. We spoke with Hawaii County Mayor Harry Kim about the sobering milestone. All the records that I'm really concerned about have been broken. The number of businesses destroyed forever. The number of homes destroyed and covered forever. So it goes beyond that, you know, just a numbers game. USGS HVO officials say they're prepared for the possibility this eruption could continue for months or years. Geologists say there have been several surprises over the last 12 weeks, but one of the biggest has been the amount of lava pumping from Fisher 8, more than 50 times the last eruption. Just the sheer volume of lava that's being erupted now uh, has, has been quite different and a, a bit of a surprise to see that much lava erupting on the lower east drift zone. There's been very little normalcy for the thousands of Puna residents who've been displaced by the ongoing eruption. Not just for the more than 700 people whose civil defense says lost their homes, but many others whose houses were built without permits and whose losses are not part of the official count. Officials say they also don't have a number for those who've been forced to relocate because their houses, which are still standing, are inaccessible or who've had to abandon their homes because sulfur dioxide levels are dangerously high. Mileka Lincoln, Hubbard ah! News Now. Ah! 
And this is video from the lava tour boat explosion in Hawaii that went viral a couple weeks ago. This morning we're hearing from an Illinois college student who still remains in the hospital. Her family has since hired a high profile attorney. Now that lava blast sent fragments raining down on the lava ocean tours vessel where 20 year old Jessica Tilton was sitting next to a railing trying to shield her younger sister. The accident injured 23 passengers that day, but Tilton wound up with a shattered thigh bone and a broken hip. I kept screaming like my leg because my leg hurt really bad. And I remember the, the captain saying, um, is anyone hurt? And then my dad was yelling like my daughter, my daughter is hurt. You can see on pictures on the side of the boat that there's a, a dip in the railing and that's where the, the rock hit that. And it it kind of landed in her seat. And I, think it, I, I think it hit her and kind of pushed her aside. That's why she doesn't have um, burns on her. Now the family hired an attorney to investigate whether the boat was actually too close to the lava that day. Tilton has undergone several surgeries since then, but still cannot stand or walk just yet. Well, recently we've had quite a few rainstorms here on the Sun Coast, and for some that rain is much needed, but for others it's cause for some concern. Marla Spence is live at the Mayaka River State Park where residents near there are under a code red warning this morning. Marla. Good morning, guys. That code red is in effect now until Friday for those who live along Mayaka River and the Mayaka River State Park. Now it is a warning for those to get ready for potential flooding after recent rainfall and rainfall to come. Now this is a cause for concern for some who live along the river and the state park. One resident who lives in this area tells us just from rainfall alone, she's been getting quite a bit of flooding, sometimes up to her knees. So far, the emergency management officials in Sarasota County have warned about 2,000 homeowners along the river about the code red warning. Some of the residents have lived there for years, so it's just another day for them. But uh, uh, but again, we just want to make sure everybody has is prepared and know what's what's coming. Now, as you can imagine, this could be very frustrating for residents who live in this area, especially those who may have animals and pets coming up at 545. We're going to be talking to one homeowner. You're going to be hearing from her and how she deals with the potential flooding. Reporting live at Mayaka River State Park, I'm Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. A developing story now. A federal judge in Washington state has issued a temporary restraining order to block the distribution of the downloadable blueprints allow anyone to make plastic guns with a 3D printer. A Texas nonprofit group called Defense Distributed won a battle that started in 2013 when its founder Cody Wilson posted a design for a handgun online. Today, users were supposed to be able to make their own guns at home without a background check, but Wilson says his site has disabled downloads until he reviews the order. President committed to the safety and security of all Americans and considers this his highest responsibility. In the United States, it's currently illegal to own or make a wholly plastic gun of any kind, including those made on a 3D printer. The National Rifle Association released a statement backing up that idea, saying undetectable plastic guns have been illegal for 30 years. Back here on the Sun Coast, have you ever used the Let Go app? Well, it's an easy way to quickly sell your old stuff, but it turns out it's also an easy way to get scammed. According to Sarasota Police, two grand thefts and at least one robbery have been reported this month alone by people using the Let Go app. We're not sure if these three are connected. We have different descriptions of the three suspects, but we do want to let folks know that we've seen an uptick in this, and so we want them to be on the be on the lookout. And, you know, if you're going to do these online transactions, make sure to do them in a safe location. So where is a safe location? Well, here's a good idea. The lobby of the Sarasota Police Headquarters is actually designated as a safe place to complete those online transactions. President Trump is back at the White House this morning after spending last night in Tampa. He held a rally at the Florida State Fairgrounds where he campaigned for gubernatorial candidate Ron DeSantis. Thousands packed the hall and others watched on a big screen outside. The president spoke about the strength of the economy, but also said during the rally that shoppers need photo ID to buy groceries. You know, if you go out and you want to buy groceries, you need a picture on a card. You need ID. You go out and you want to buy anything. 
You need ID and you need your picture. Now, before he got to Tampa yesterday, President Trump signed the American Dream Accounts Act into law. It was a piece of legislation promoted by Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Now, that law aims to help and provide college grant money to help low-income and at-risk students complete college. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, one man is thankful this morning what his Apple Watch was able to detect weeks before he even felt a health issue. And coming up a little later in the hour, Miracle in Mexico is what they are calling it after a horrific plane crash just after a takeoff. How all the passengers on board managed to survive. We're going to hear from one of those passengers a little bit later around 5.30. This is a live shot now from Pearl Harbor where the U.S. soldiers' remains from the Korean War will be returned to Vice President Mike Pence today. That is right. And a little bit later, actually in the 6 o'clock hour, you're going to hear from some local veterans on how important they feel this move is to find finally have some closure for all the families of those soldiers after all these years. But first, a local forecast from John Scalzi. So we're looking at a pretty quiet morning. I think morning commute should be pretty much rain free. Might be getting a little bit of drizzle, drizzle or some light rainfall right along the immediate coast. But for most of us, quiet. Put it about a 10% chance of a morning shower. Followed by this afternoon, about a 40% chance of thunderstorms building mostly in inland locations. Detail that forecast for you coming up in just a few. We believe in patriotism. We believe in our nation's youth. We believe veterans earn their benefits through their service to our nation. We believe in a strong national security. We believe in our country. For 100 years, veterans have been impacting our nation through the American Legion, and we believe it makes a difference. If you believe, learn more at legion.org slash we believe. So, you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So, pop quiz, which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. In the park on a bench, on the beach on a towel, or on your couch with your kid, your campus is wherever you want it to be. You don't go to college, college goes to you. That's Independence, that's Independence University. You schedule classes around your schedule and all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet are included with tuition. At Independence U, you'll learn from professional instructors with real work experience. You'll get personal support in school and employment assistance when you graduate. Get your degree, but keep your life. That's Independence, that's Independence University. So if you're really smart, you'd call now. Call 1-800-965-2704. Independence U for an independent U. Call 1-800-965-2704. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. First alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 
Dew point in the mid 70s this morning. We have an air temperature of 76 degrees. Pretty quiet along the coastline currently, but I think as we progress into the afternoon, we'll see a little bit more activity develop. They have a chance at seeing some showers near the coast, but a much better chance in inland areas later this afternoon. We'll go with about a 10% chance of a coastal shower along the uh, uh, along the immediate coastline during the morning hours or early morning hours by later in the morning and into the afternoon we'll have about a 20 percent chance and then max it out today slightly less than yesterday again the focus mostly in inland locations with about a 40 percent chance of showers i think we'll have a little bit more sunshine around today than we did yesterday as well a lot of the rain showers yesterday kind of held down by the cloud cover that we had around plus the fact that the the winds kind of favored the inland locations for showers and i think again today we'll have that same sort of situation a general southerly wind flow will push the shower activity from south to north and so most of the rainfall will occur in inland areas as we as we develop a little bit of a sea breeze and push those uh, convergence lines inland. You'll see as we head into the afternoon hours on our future cast, most of the activity in inland areas. There could be some pretty good downpours of rain once again in Hardy and DeSoto counties. Along the coastline, we still do have a chance of rainfall, even though it's lower than it is in inland areas. Our coastline, you know, is basically a, a north-south coastline, but it does have a little bit of an east to west lean as you progress from south to north. So uh, some of the showers lifting from south to north could graze the coastline. And so we'll put the rain chance near the coast at about 20 to 30 percent, while in inland areas it'll probably be closer to 40 to 50 percent. Uh, as we head into the evening, I think we'll start to see the rain shower chances begin to diminish. Inland, we have a chance at seeing some fairly decent rainfall in places with a few thunderstorms developing, perhaps some two inch rainfalls or maybe even higher. Um, we saw that yesterday. Wachula saw some pretty good rainfall with an uh, inch and a half to two inch rains. And along the coastline, we generally saw either no rain at all or we saw less than half inch rainfalls. And I think that'll be paralleled again this afternoon. A little bit higher rain chance tomorrow as our winds shift to a more easterly direction. And so collisions with the sea breeze will cause some of those showers to back build near the coast. To the north of us, we have a chance of some stronger storms up near the panhandle of the state. A little trough of low pressure exists to the north and to the uh, west of us. Again, high pressure out in the Atlantic waters. We're kind of caught in between those two features, and that provides us with that southerly wind flow today. Uh, showers out in Gulf Waters, Mariners, will be kind of persistent, and we'll have a lot of lightning pops out there as well. So be aware of that as you uh, continue boating today. The wind should be, <coughs> excuse me, fairly light, but those thunderstorms will be persistent. So the forecast looks like this for today for winds. Consider southerly winds breezy at times this afternoon as they pick up just a little bit at about 10 to 15. We'll call it a moderate chop on your bay and inland waters. And the forecast calls for a 40% chance of showers today. A little shift in wind, a little reorientation of the high pressure ridge in the Atlantic will bring us slightly higher rain chances tomorrow. Maybe a few more clouds around tomorrow as well. And then some drier air will filter in and we'll look for reduced rain chances really right through the weekend. In fact, as we head into the beginning of next work week, we'll drop those rain chances down to about 30 percent. Back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, John. Let's take a look outside and check that first alert traffic for you this morning. So far, not too bad in Manatee County. All the roads are pretty clear for the most part. No real issues there. In Sarasota County, those roads are looking pretty decent so far for the top half of the area. And then if you're headed a little bit farther south on 75 or 41, both of those roads are running pretty smooth at this hour as well. It is 518, and that is your first alert traffic. A Texas man says his Apple Watch may have saved his life. 24-year-old John Arias says he's never never had any health problems and heart conditions don't even run in his family. So he was shocked when his Apple Watch told him that he needed to see a doctor and it actually notified him that he had an irregular heartbeat. Well, it started about two weeks prior to me actually going to the hospital. I received, um, I started just getting random notifications saying that my heart rate was over 110, 120 with, without being active. Later in that two weeks, I started to get heart palpitations. It's only like the dollar ninety nine. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Now Aria says that that sent him to the emergency room where doctors yeah. diagnosed him with premature ventricular contractions. Aria says the Apple Watch notified him of those irregularities about two weeks 
before he ever felt any chest pain. It'll cause some extra sales of Apple Watches, I would think. I was think. like, right now, leaving to go get my Apple Watch. Wow, <laughs> endorsement, yes. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast. If you travel a lot, we've got a new app that might help keep those airplanes a little more comfortable and even more safe. And it all has to do with the plane's internal temperature. We'll explain it in today's Tech Bites. And next half hour at 530, if your house catches on fire, how long do you have to get out? A new study shows you might not have as long as you used to. We'll explain. First, a live shot out of South Korea. Right now, they are loading up the remains of what appear to be U.S. soldiers that were serving during the North Korean War. Now, part of that summit a couple weeks ago in Helsinki was the return of soldiers' remains. Right now, they are on their way to a state-of-the-art medical facility in Hawaii where the identification process begins. They're going to have to use dental impressions, DNA, and forensic anthropology to finally identify all of those soldiers and bring some closure to all those families. Yeah, quite a process, but yeah. it looks like things are moving forward there. 520 right now, you're watching Good Morning Suncoast on ABC7. From the moment she walked in the door, we stopped having to go to the pharmacy. Certain prescriptions, um, my health plan or the pharmacy, I wasn't even able to get here. And hospice provided them, and all we had to do was call up, and um, the next thing they know, there, there was another, you know, a delivery. We've been fighting the war on drugs for a long time. We answer the phone 24-7, 365 days a year. On a busy night, we answer hundreds of calls. This war on drugs needs our intervention. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has helped people struggling with drugs and alcohol. When the phone rings, we help people when they need it the most. When we get a caller into treatment, it feels right. It feels good. It's a blessing. If you're struggling, drinking, using, and need to get clean, don't suffer alone in silence. Call Addiction Hope and Helpline. Our people understand, and many are also in recovery. Call for support and strength. You can call for someone who can't or isn't willing. It's an act of love. Together we can help you beat this thing and erase addiction from your vocabulary once and for all. Call 800-871-1644. 800-871-1644. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can, too. For free help, visit cdc.gov slash tips. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. Well, could Apple be the first trillion dollar company? An answer in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Apple's big gains. The company reported profits from iPhone sales jumped significantly, and that news sent shares soaring, giving the company a value of $960 billion. Analysts say if the trend continues, Apple will be the world's first trillion dollar company. Schools across France are hanging up on smartphones. The country has banned all internet connected devices for students under 16. 
French President Emmanuel Macron said during his campaign that smartphones in school are a distraction and often used in bullying. An app called Too Hot, Too Cold is now part of a new effort by flight attendants to find a temperature on airplanes that's just right. Yeah, so get this. It allows users to file reports about cabin temperatures. The data will be used to help pressure the government into establishing set guidelines for temperatures on board. Those are your tech bites. Too cold. It's always too always hot. Always too cold. Yeah. Tech Bites, sponsored by Fruit of the Loom. Fruit of the Loom's Everlight underwear is so light, you won't even notice you're wearing it. Now, are you really not going to notice the underwear you're wearing? No. No, you're not. Uh, excuse me, do you have any more of these pistachio scones? Because it's made from incredibly light material and no panty lines, so no one else will notice either. And going unnoticed can sometimes be quite nice. Guys, I need someone to work the weekend. Karen, see you Saturday. What? A noticeably light Everlight from Fruit of the Loom. Salads should look like this. Crisp leaves of lettuce, freshly made dressing, clean food that looks this good, delivered to your desk. Now delivering to home or office. Panera, food as it should be. How did we test our Dixie Ultra plates? With two pounds of steak in each hand. Dixie Ultra. Stress tested so you can stress less at dinner. Without the letters A, B, and O, there's no mom. No dad. There's no Brittany. Because A's, B's, and O's determine your blood type. And we're missing all of them. That's why the American Red Cross needs people like you to help fill the gaps. Schedule your donation at redcrossblood.org. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph or tragedy, the Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Uh, Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org slash hope. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5.30. This morning, a strange health concern in South Sarasota County will tell you what all the stink is about. Plus, PETA says it helps shut down a local circus. 
We'll tell you why. And one school district is going above and beyond to spread some positive vibes on campus for the new school year. We'll tell you just how. We have those stories plus your Wednesday forecast right now on Good Morning Suncoast. And good morning to you. It is 529 on this Wednesday morning, the... First day of August. That's right. Welcome to the show. I'm Stephanie Webb. I'm Ray Collins. John Scalzi is tracking some showers off the coast this morning. Indeed. And Becky and Mayaka won't, uh, uh, reported, sorry, not Becky and Mayaka, but Morgan Lee and Bradenton reported in with uh, two pieces of information. One is she got uh, about half an inch of rainfall yesterday, and the second is white rabbits, she says. So just so you know, white rabbits. Good okay. luck to everybody. We have some showers out in Gulf waters, even a few thunderstorms out here. Not a lot along the coastline. Uh, I think the coast should remain relatively quiet this morning for your morning commute. I have not checked the box for um, rainfall in the morning commute forecast, which we'll show you in just a few minutes. But we do have thunderstorms out in the Gulf, so boaters pay attention to that. As we head into the afternoon, we have a better chance of seeing some rainfall. As we'll start the day off, I think, with a fair amount of sunshine. That sunshine, of course, will help to stabilize the atmosphere atmosphere and bring us about a 40% chance of rain today. Complete forecast in a minute. Thank you, John. Checking traffic right now. Our first alert maps show us some issue there on State Road 70 in the eastbound lane as you get around Lockwood Ridge, otherwise pretty clear in Manatee County. Checking farther south now into the northern half of Sarasota County. Nothing much to report right now. University actually along the top of your screen. We see some red there in the westbound lanes of University as you head from Honoré toward Whitfield and toward Lockwood Ridge. Farther south, only one little issue there, just north of the bypass between Nicomas and Venice. This morning, they are calling it the miracle in Mexico. Moments after it took off, a strong gust of wind caused an Aero Mexico plane to crash and burst into flames. But all of the passengers and crew survived. Andrew Spencer has a story. The Aero Mexico plane ended up in a field just beyond the runway. The flight headed for Mexico City crashed just after takeoff from the Guadalupe Victoria International Airport in Durango, Mexico, more than 550 miles northwest of Mexico City. The images from the crash site are striking. Smoke rising off the wreckage of the plane, firefighters working to put out the flames, the Red Cross helping treat the injured and get them transported to nearby hospitals. 103 people were on board the Aero Mexico flight. Annabelle Estrada was one of them. She says she felt the plane hit the ground twice during the crash. The second impact was stronger. She says that's when her head hit the ceiling. Then she saw flames in the cabin in front of her. Of the 99 passengers and four members of the flight crew, 49 of them ended up in the hospital. Amazingly, government officials say everyone on board survived. The most severe injuries appear to have been suffered by the pilot and one of the passengers. Durango's governor said Tuesday that both of them were in critical condition, but they were stable. After the crash, officials with the airline said, we deeply regret this accident and the families of all those affected are in our thoughts. The plane that crashed was an Embraer 190. The Brazilian manufacturer said it was sending technicians to the crash site to help investigators determine why the plane crashed. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. A somber ceremony later on today in Hawaii where Vice President Mike Pence will receive the remains of U.S. soldiers who fought in the Korean War. Now, this is a live shot happening right now in South Korea. Later today, Pence will receive the 55 boxes of Korean War remains recently handed over by North Korea along with a single dog tag. Several dozen Hawaii veterans will attend that ceremony. The remains will be taken to the world's largest forensics lab at Hickam Air Force Base, where experts will use dental records and DNA to make identifications. In just a few hours, day two begins in the federal trial of former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort. Now, the trial is the first one brought by special counsel Robert Mueller in his investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Now, day one began with prosecutors painting Manafort as a tax evader who laundered millions to fund an extravagant lifestyle. He's accused of money laundering and hiding those millions of dollars in an overseas account from a former president of the Ukraine. Now, according to CNN, if he is convicted, those crimes could carry a total sentence of 300 years in prison. In the last few days, we've heard from many of you in the South Sarasota County area about a smell, possibly red tide. 
We've been talking about the effects red tide has on our beaches and marine life, but this is the first time we're hearing about complaints inland. Earlier this week, the entire south area from Venice to Port Charlotte had an overpowering smell of dead fish reaching as far as 10 miles inland. Exactly 9.9 .9 miles from Venice Beach and about the same distance from Englewood and Minnesota Beach. So never in a million years did I think that the smell from red tide, which you do experience on a daily basis now, would come this far up. There were several storms that moved in last night that brought high winds, so marine experts tell us that might be the cause of it. But the color of our water and the amount of dead fish that continue to wash ashore is what has many worried that this toxic algae bloom isn't going away anytime soon. Well, if a fire broke out in your home, how much time do you think would it take to get out before that fire spreads? Well, a new study shows that the way that modern homes are being built, you may have less time than you actually think. Now, because of the way that homes are being built now in the 21st century, firefighters say that homeowners only have about three minutes to escape. So why such a short time? Well, these days, the synthetic materials that are used in home construction now burn hotter, shortening the average escape time from 17 minutes down to just three minutes. Now it's all synthetic fibers, and the synthetic fibers pose more of a risk with uh, hotter and more lethal fires than what we used to have. Now, fire officials say that if this housing trend continues, it's not going to be in the best interest of firefighters who are going to be called out on more of those kind of calls. PETA says it has successfully closed down a local circus organization for alleged animal abuse. The animal advocates released several videos of the company Circus Pages in Mayaca City alleging the company was whipping and beating their animals. Now, the owner of Circus Pages could not be reached for comment, but we were able to confirm they will be closing their doors. Their website, by the way, says it's named after Jose Pages and began in Cuba back in the 1960s. Some lucky students in Manatee County are getting three new schools, all now officially under construction as of today. The groundbreaking of the new elementary took place yesterday morning just off Moccasin Walla Road in Parrish. Then construction for the new middle school is underway right now across from Gullet Elementary. And the new high school is going to be located at the intersection of Martha and Erie Roads, also in Parrish. The school district says a thousand new students are coming into the district every year. It looks like we're going to have to be building more schools in the not too distant future. All three of those schools are set to open in the next fall. Manatee County's Greatest Generation is invited to a reunion of all Bradenton High School and Manatee County High School classes from 1932 to 1949. They'll celebrate the 75th anniversary of the class of 43's graduation. It'll be Friday, September 7th at the Pier 22 Ballroom on Bradenton's Riverfront. Tickets are $40 per person. Well, is your back to school shopping list ready? If so, the annual back to school sales tax holiday kicks off this weekend. That means no sales tax on clothes and shoes up to $60 and certain school supplies up to $15. Now you can find a complete list of all the supplies included in this year's tax holiday online at mysuncoast.com. Still ahead right now, a code red for residents who live near the Mayaka River, the potential flooding they could experience. And here's now a live shot out of South Korea, where right now they are loading up the remains of U.S. soldiers to return them to Hawaii for identification. These soldiers, of course, are ones that have fought and died in the Korean War and came as a result of the Helsinki summit a couple weeks ago between President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. So finally, some closure underway this morning for some of those families. We're tracking local weather as well right now. There's some showers off the coast, John. On the Gulf waters, yes, they are. I think most of them will stay there, too, this morning for your drive time. So we'll go only put about a 10% chance of a shower near the coastline for the morning hours. It'll be a brief sprinkle if we get one. Otherwise, rain chances will max out this afternoon at about 40%, mostly in inland locations. I have not checked the rain box for your drive time forecast because I don't think it's going to end up being a big problem and on the way home most of those storms will be in well inland areas. We will put about a 40% chance of those showers though in for inland locations. No airport delays being reported by the FAA for any of the airport hubs serving Sarasota International Airport. We'll be right back with your forecast. Judy here I think 
I think hospice was a tremendous source of support for her. Absolutely. With Jennifer and Kimberly and Liza's constant contact with us, coming in, just knowing that there was someone with knowledge there to back us up, to answer our questions, it made a world of difference. It's hard to see when you're outside at night. It's time for the Atomic Beam Sunblast, the new solar-powered light that's super bright. Atomic Beam Sunblast lets you add a light anywhere, and the atomic solar panels charge the built-in lithium-ion battery quickly. Then the 180-degree motion sensor turns on the light when you get near and automatically turns off when you disappear. Look, here's a best-selling outdoor solar light. And here's the Super Bright Atomic Beam Sunblast. Get the Super Bright Atomic Beam Sunblast for only $19.99. But wait, call right now and you can double your order and get a second sunblast. Plus, our best-selling Atomic Beam Flashlight. Just pay a separate fee. That's two Atomic Beam Sunblasts and the Atomic Beam Flashlight. Call now. Call 1-800-431-6640, that's 1-800-431-6640, or visit mysunblast.com, so call 1-800-431-6640, order now. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied and her caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs, stop the crimes. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 76 degrees the air temperature. We have a dew point value of 74. Fairly quiet conditions across the Sun Coast right now and fairly clear skies. I think we'll see some sunshine as we start the morning off along the coastline and that sunshine, of course, will help to destabilize the atmosphere and bring us our chance of rainfall a little bit later in the afternoon. Now, some of the storms that form could produce some heavy rainfall today. There's still plenty of moisture in the atmosphere. But most of the rain showers that occurred this afternoon are going to be in inland areas, and that's where the heaviest of the rain will fall. Similar to yesterday, we had some two inch rainfalls around yesterday, but they were in Wachula. So I think a lot of those rain showers again today will be in Hardy, DeSoto, uh, areas of uh, extreme eastern parts of Charlotte County, perhaps. 20% uh, chance of rainfall by about 9 o'clock this morning. Continue that on through the noontime hour, then a 40% chance as we head into the 3 p.m. hour and then we'll trend it back down as we go into the evening. So right now we have plenty of rain showers close to our coastline and some heavy rainfall to the north of us moving into areas around Cape Sam Blast up near Tallahassee. There's going to be some heavy rainfall up there. This is closer to the trough of low pressure, which has helped to destabilize the atmosphere in that location. We're kind of between this trough of low pressure producing that heavy rainfall in northern Gulf waters and a big ridge of high pressure providing basically cloud free skies in parts of the Atlantic. That funnels the moisture up from the south and I think the general motion of these storms from south to north will continue on again today. A lot of the rain showers we see out here kind of paralleling the coast, but because our coast has a bit of a slant out into Gulf waters, we could see a few of these showers kind of tag us through the morning hours. That's why I put in that slight chance of a rainfall, particularly as we head into 9, 10, 11 o'clock. Most of the rain, though, following the sea breeze in inland areas. As I mentioned, we had a couple of uh, areas of uh, 
uh, concern for some in, uh, inland uh, lakes and streams. Uh, I put this information on our website, mysuncoast.com, of when we think they're going to uh, max out, and I will update that information over the course of the next hour. Minor flooding anticipated in those locations. Uh, Hidden Acres, Peace River Estates, those locations that are kind of used to flooding are the locations where it's most likely to see some minor flooding. Pops of lightning out in Gulf waters again this morning, a hazard to boaters. Just be aware that those thunderstorms will probably be kind of consistent throughout the day. High pressure in the Atlantic, trough of low pressure in the Midwest, stretching into the deep south, provides us with that southerly wind flow. Our showers again today basically form from south moving to north mostly along the spine of the state. Tomorrow, I think they might be a little bit closer to the coastline. We might have a little bit better chance of rainfall right along the immediate coast as we get a slight twist in our winds that'll bring us a more easterly wind flow. So for today, sun cloud mix, afternoon storms mostly, but drier this weekend, I think, and we might be able to even reduce our rain chance down to maybe 30%, a little bit lower than average as we get some drier air that might filter in here by Saturday or Sunday. Right now I'll hold those rain chances at about 40% and start the 30% rain chance later, the beginning of next work week, but we might be able to move that timetable up just a bit. South wind coming in at about 10 to 15, kind of breezy this afternoon, a little bit of a surge of winds, 40% chance of showers today. We'll increase the rain chance a little bit with a twist in the winds tomorrow at about 50%. Then as we head into the weekend, some drier air starts to filter in a little bit more sunshine and rain chances reduced to 40% for Saturday and Sunday. The pattern of those storms will be a little bit different. They'll be more typical for this time of year. Building in inland areas, they'll drift back to the coast late in the day. Monday and Tuesday, the drier air firmly in place reduces rain chances to about 30%. Back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, John. Let's take a look outside and check some of that traffic. First off, starting in Manatee County, starting to see a couple delays right there at that intersection of State Road 70 and 301, which is pretty typical for around this time of the morning. In south, or actually moving south into Sarasota County, those roads are not looking too bad just yet either. Just some typical morning delays, but nothing really to be concerned about. If your commute is going to take you south on 41 or 75, both of those are running pretty clear at this hour. It is 546, and that is your first alert traffic. Well, happening right now, a code red flood warning is in effect along the Mayaka River. Our Marla Spence joins us from the Mayaka River State Park where there's a potential for flooding. Marla? Good morning, guys. About 2,000 homeowners who live along or even nearby the river have a cause and a reason to be concerned this morning. And even this week, so far, they are under a cold warn, cold red warning, which means that they can potentially get flooding at their homes. Now, so far, residents in this area say that flooding is nothing new. Although this may be true, they are still frustrated with the amount of rainwater that they see just from rainfall alone. Susan Kusia, who is one resident who lives in this area, tells us just from rain alone she gets lots of flooding and sometimes it's up to her knees. She says she's been living near the river for six years now and she tells us what makes her nervous about potential flooding is the amount of animals that she has including her 11 horses. She tells us in preparation she is constantly checking the river levels to make sure she does not have to evacuate and she says if she does she is ready. I'm ready to take the horses out the back pastures and then you know, hopefully if I want to make sure if I'm not home, I'll call my neighbors to help me get the dogs out. You know, the cats, they can climb a tree. Right now, the river at Mayaka River State Park is at 6.6 .6 inches at the moment. That's only four inches away from being flooded. I'm Marlo Spence reporting live at the Mayaka River State Park for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Marlo, thank you. Facebook says it thinks Russia is again targeting U.S. politics by creating fake profiles. Reporter Drew Griffin has the latest. Facebook calls it inauthentic behavior, and though Facebook can't be sure, it sure looks like Russia again. 32 pages with names including Black Elevation, Resistors, Aztlan Warriors, being followed by 290,000 accounts. The fake accounts also setting up and promoting real events and protests aimed at further polarizing U.S. political discourse. Everybody in! Everybody in! Nobody out! No! 
many of the events did occur, including this one last year in New York City, attended by actual Americans who likely had no idea that the Resisters Facebook page was probably run by Russians. Another event by the same group was supposed to take place in a couple of weeks. Resisters set up a counter-protest against white supremacists at the White House August 10th. Five other real groups signed on to participate. As Facebook was announcing its crackdown on these potential Russian sites, the U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security was at a cybersecurity conference saying there's no doubt Russia meddled in the 2016 election. Everyone and everything is now a target. And Russian actors may be added again, comparing the upcoming midterm elections to a looming storm. But today, I believe the next major attack is more likely to reach us online than on an airplane. We are in a crisis mode. The Cat 5 hurricane has been forecast, and now we must prepare. Facebook says these current pages all shut down have the hallmarks of the activities the Russians did around the presidential election. Though there are some differences, this time the pages didn't lead back to Russian IP addresses, and they used third-party services to buy ads to boost their posts and encourage people to follow the pages. Now, Facebook is in the process of notifying everyone who was in contact with these 32 fake sites, letting them know that these groups are fake and most likely Russians trying to meddle in U.S. politics. Well, here's how to start the new school year off the right way. Staff at these elementary and middle schools in Mississippi are going above and beyond to spread some positive vibes there. They're decorating all the stalls and the walls of all the bathrooms in the schools with positive quotes and messages to give the students a morale boost. One teacher there says they hope to be a positive force in the lives of their students. And if we don't make a, an effort to try to make a change, then we're not going to see any positive changes and I encourage everyone to get out and help your schools because we have to make a difference for our children's future. I love that. What a great idea. Now the next step she says is seeing the excited faces of the students when they come back to school and see what they've done. Now there's the payoff. All right 551 right now on this first day of August live shot outside our studio looking back south at downtown Sarasota. We'll come back with our top headlines including the death of a local philanthropic icon on Good Morning Suncoast. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. We've been fighting the war on drugs for a long time. We answer the phone 24-7, 365 days a year. On a busy night, we answer hundreds of calls. This war on drugs needs our intervention. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has helped people struggling with drugs and alcohol. When the phone rings, we help people when they need it the most. When we get a caller into treatment, it feels right. It feels good. It's a blessing. If you're struggling, drinking, using, and need to get clean, don't suffer alone in silence. Call Addiction Hope and Helpline. Our people understand, and many are also in recovery. Call for support and strength. You can call for someone who can't or isn't willing. It's an act of love. Together we can help you beat this thing and erase addiction from your vocabulary once and for all. Call 800-871-1644. 800-871-1644. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cdc.gov concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. 
Isn't it? Why it is, is heroin, heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad? Did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling, and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Welcome back. It is 5.54, and here are the top stories that we've been following for you on the Sun Coast today. 10,000 supporters filled the state fairgrounds in Tampa last night to see President Trump. He rallied support for Congressman Ron DeSantis, who is running for governor. Plus, miracle in Mexico. That's what they're calling it this morning. After an Aero Mexico plane crashed moments after takeoff, burst into flames, yet all the passengers and crew survived. And longtime Sarasota philanthropist Betty Schoenbaum has passed away. She was the widow of the founder of Shoney's Restaurants. Schoenbaum was 100 years old. Wow. All right, here's one final look at the weather from John Scalzi. So your takeaways today are that we'll have a sudden cloud mix, maybe a little more sunshine today than over the previous day, and we'll have some afternoon storms, mostly in inland areas, but some of them could be heavy. Calm in the tropics over the next five days, and we'll have a drier weekend. Back to you. Thank you, John. I'm going to show you one more time this hour the, uh, the scene in South Korea where the remains of U.S. soldiers from the Korean War are being returned back to the United States. That is right. They're on their way right now to Hickam Air Force Base. Now, this actually has a state-of-the-art military facility, one of the best forensics labs in the entire world. All of these remains now have to be identified using DNA, dental impressions, and forensic anthropology. So finally, some closure for families, for at least 55 service members after all these years. Yeah, it really is. We'll continue to track that uh, story there and also more news in the second hour of Good Morning Suncoast. See you in two minutes.